Hi guys. So today I want to talk about scale symmetric random walks. So if you remember in the last lecture we talked about symmetric random walks and we took a coin, we conducted an experiment, we took a coin and we tossed it infinitely many times. So we're going to conduct the same experiment again. The outcome of such an experiment is given by omega and it's composed of individual coin tosses given by omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 all the way to infinity, okay? Like before, we're also going to have a probability space and probability space is given by a sample space, a sigma algebra and a probability measure P, okay? And in this probability measure, the probability of getting a head is equal to probability of getting a tail and both are equal to half, okay? Now, if you remember, in the previous lecture, we basically talked about, we, we defined a series of random variables given by x of i, and this basically took a value of positive 1 if the ith coin toss was a head, and a minus 1 if ith coin toss was a tail, okay? So, this was basically a series of simple um, random variables, only taking a plus 1 or a minus 1, okay? Then we use these random variables and we defined our symmetric random walk by m of k and we said this is basically equal to summation of i equals 1 to k of x of i, okay? And we also said m of 0 is equal to 0, k equals 1, 2, 3, go ahead. So series of these random variables now m0, m1, m2, m3, this series of random variables was basically called a random walk, okay? And then in the previous lecture, we talked about various properties of random walk, uh, the properties of their increments, all of that stuff. Uh, so now what I would like to do is, following the similar approach, I would like to talk about scale symmetric random walks, okay? So let's do that here. So the experiment is again going to be the same thing. We're going to take a coin and we're going to toss it infinitely many times. Probability of getting a head and a tail are both equal, equal to half. And this random, and we're going to define a series of these random variables, x of i, which will take a value of plus 1 if the ith coin toss is equal to head and minus 1 if the ith coin toss is equal to tail. So basically it's the same thing so far. Okay, but if you remember in the previous uh, lecture when we were talking about symmetric random walk, this i basically signified the ith coin toss. Okay, this k signified the kth coin toss. Nowhere here we talked about how frequently we are tossing these coins. So there was no concept of time then, right? We never really talked about time here. We just said after the first coin toss, second coin toss, third coin toss, when are these coin tosses taking place? We basically didn't talk about that. So time never really featured in our discussion last time. So now what I would like to do is, I would like to introduce time. Okay, time is going to be a continuous variable, t, and it's going to be defined by t, and it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. That's the first thing, okay? And secondly, I would like to define an integer, which is going to be denoted by n. It's some integer. What the value of the integer is right now is not very important. Let's just say this is an, an integer, okay, n. <clears throat> now what I would like to do, so we've defined already these series of random variables given by x of i's. Now I would like to define a, another series of random variables called m of nt. Okay, n is the same integer and t basically is our time. And this is going to be given by summation of i equals 1 to nt of x of i's, okay? But this definition is valid only if nt is an integer, okay? So let me just explain a little bit how this is going to work. Let's just say we fix this value of n, our integer, to 100, okay? Now, we have to look for those t's, that time, where nt would be an integer. So for example, if I'm going to write down t's here. So if t was 1 by 100, 
or 2 by 100 or 3 by 100 or 4 by 100 and this can continue then nt n multiplied by t n is 100 t is this so here we'll get 1 here we'll get 2 3 4 etc right so for all of these times nt is basically an integer and we can calculate the value of m of nt using this formula right here but to calculate the value of mt we need to know what x of i's are x of i's are basically defined right here but where is our omega where is the coin toss okay x of i's depend on the coin toss and we so far we haven't tossed any coins so what we're going to do is at these time steps we're going to start tossing coins okay this would be omega 1 this would be omega 2 this would be omega 3 be omega 4 likewise so at every time step we're basically tossing a coin okay and the outcome of that coin toss is going to be given by omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 omega 4 and it, this continues and once we know the value of omega 1 or omega i then using this definition we can figure out the value of x of 1 x of 2 x of 3 x of 4 and so forth and using this formula then we can calculate the value of m of nt so for example if n was 100 and we wanted to calculate the value of m of nt when t was equal to 0 0.2 nt would be 20 0.2 multiplied by 100 would be 20 and m of 20 would be given by summation of i equals 1 to 20 of x of i's so this would basically depend m of 20 would then depend on the first 20 coin tosses okay because by the time we reach 0.2 time equals 0.2 we would have tossed 20 coins and we would know what the outcome of the 20 coins are and we would know the value of these first 20 uh, random variables and we can sum them up to come up with the value of m of 20 okay so hopefully how, what is this m of nt this basically is is clear now in the previous lecture m of k was basically our uh, these series of these random variables was our uh, symmetric random walk but when we're talking about scale symmetric random walk this by itself is not a scale symmetric run uh, uh, scale symmetric random walk and i'll basically show you what the formula of scale symmetric random walk is next